Good afternoon. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Jesse and Barca Daly here from the Chiel in Daly Paco um, in Thienesville, Wisconsin. Thank you both for jumping on with me today. Thank you, Thank you for having us, Stacy. It's my pleasure. I'm really excited to ask you about your business history with your multiple restaurants that you opened up in Thienesville. So if you're okay with it, I'll get started with these questions. Sounds great. All right, here we go. When people ask you how you describe the Chiel and Daily Taco, how do you describe what you do in business? Well, I mean, I think quite simply put, um, my wife's showing love through food. I mean, that's she doesn't let many people use tools in our, our kitchens uh, to make things faster because she feels that there's a lot of energy that goes into the food that you cut with your hands and that, you know, in Nepal, a lot of the things are about eating with your hands and experience of things, feels and touch and textures. So um, I'd say that's one of the big things that differentiates us in a lot of ways is that uh, there's a lot more effort put into what we produce. Uh, we're not just picking it off the shelf and pre-minced garlic and pre-pressed garlic and things like that. We, there's a lot of effort that goes into what we do and specifically driven by my wife's passion for, for love. That's beautiful. So before we press record, we talked about your history and starting at farmer's markets and whatnot. Would you mind sharing what your plans were when you started your business and how they've changed? Yeah, sure. Our plan. Um, did we have a plan? Um, we saw a cool building that we thought we could restore. Um, we had a concept of food that we didn't think anybody else had. Um, I was losing weight. I was a heavier guy. My wife decided to post the most latest Facebook picture of me in that state of unhealthiness. Um, so yeah, I got that going for me. But Either way, um, it was about just wanting to, you know, produce healthy foods and uh, and change people's perception of of, of of what is healthy and what what's what's good to eat. And that's you know. So you brought up uh, before Momos and how your friends and people in the community really liked Momos. Can you talk a little bit more about Momos and that transition as well in your business? Well, when you think about it, there's there's a lot of ways to deliver food. You know, it's a food delivery vehicle. You've got your tacos, you've got, you know, your your your, your pizza crust. You know, you've got your buns. I had never experienced anything like a Momo before, other than maybe I like at a Chinese restaurant, but they're not the same. Not even close. Um, uh, for better words, a Nepalese pot sticker. Um, and they're just they're a little slice of heaven. Um, you can eat hunt, dozens and dozens of them, and they're addictive and they're wonderful and they're good and um and they're easy and that's kind of like you know when you think about finger foods that's one of the key elements you can eat it with wonton stick or i mean uh chopsticks you can eat them with your hands you can eat them with porch you can eat them with soup i mean they're probably one of the most versatile um food that i've had and, and they're they're heavenly so, so one of the best thing that people loved about our like I was able to tell them each and every ingredient and everything that momo right so and then the flavor was so different that they didn't have because the momo that we serve it's Tibetan very specific because if you even in Nepal if you go to different because we have caste system this person's home versus this person's you know it's like the my nona's uh, spaghetti versus somebody else's nona's spaghetti so it's a very different flavor. So this one is very specific to uh, Tibetan um, flavors with the yep. ginger forward. Um, so, and then it's a, so clean. So people would try this and we served it pan fried, steamed. Um, and um, it was, people loved it because the simplicity, the clean ingredient, you didn't feel heavy afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's such a good balance of um, higher protein amount than there's a carb because of the wrapper and how much meat there is. So I think people, when they were eating, their eyebrows were being raised and they were like, what are all these flavors that I've never tried before, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it was made fresh. Um, I would have my friends because, you know, we're just giving food away. So I would have my friends and their kids help me in the kitchen cutting onion, tomatoes for the sauce and things like that. So I think just tasting something that they've never tasted before mm -hmm. and then learning how clean and easy it's literally less than five different ingredients on a momo so it's such a clean ingredient and ginger being one of the really healthy uh, flavors that you can include or ingredient that you can include you know people saw those differences but people would be like where is this restaurant so that was uh, one of the 
one of the big reasons. Initially, we're like, are we sure we wanted to do this? Because, you know, teens will be named one of the retirement community. Are they going to be open to changes? And But I did know with that, particular people related to it differently. Europeans, like let's say Polish, like, you know, there's a pierogi, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, it's there is, um, so another version of this would be, um, uh, what am I, ravioli. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much like a dough with things inside it, how it's cooked. You can boil momo, you can steam momo, you can fry momo, and you can see all of that in pierogies, you can see that, you know, every country has their own version of momo, and it is what it's called and what the flavor of what the front flavor is going to be. So it was, there was a little bit of transition that we could utilize to get people to understand what that was. Stacey, and I got I to gotta jet here, but one thing, you know, when people would come to the restaurant, one thing that I would always say, I would say, it's the best food you've never heard of. Because <laughs> nobody knew it. anything on the menu. It was like, we had a complete explanation from beginning to end, with what every word was. I'm like, honey, can we make this American dish on the menu? No. It must be traditional. It must be authentic. We're not selling ourselves out. We made great tacos, too. It was very nice talking to you, Stacey. I'm sure Barker can take you all the way home. And um, love you, honey. Thank See you tomorrow. Too. <laughs> so we talk about um really one of the ways that you're impacting the community is through educating on through food what are the biggest ways that you believe that you do impact the community i think one of the biggest way and i didn't really think about it uh beforehand this giving back has always been really true to my heart right coming like from college when I came into the U.S. in 2003 to like I was always about giving back being an organization giving back but once I owned a business I realized I couldn't even though I couldn't give a dollar amount to an organization I was able to give my time mm -hmm. for example me going and cooking at somebody's house and that was auctioned off and that raised a certain amount for it could be Milwaukee Public Museum to it could be for JCC. It could be for various things. Wow. And also being able to give gift cards. Uh, I'm at this point, we're probably oversitting almost a million dollar in in-kind donation, right? So that was something I didn't think that I could do, mm -hmm. that I was able to give a big impact on also donating food during COVID. We did that. Uh, for firefighters or police or nurses, like we'd give lunches and things like that. So there was the big air, but the big part about was being involved with the education founder, donating it to them, to the chamber. It did not matter. Mm -hmm. I hardly ever say no to when somebody asks me for something. When it comes to restaurant, the only time is if it's for profit, then it's kind of mm -hmm. hard for me to be like, okay, why do you need it? But if it is for good cause and it is for the community and local businesses, I'm all for it. And I've been able to give back, you know, as a small business owner, I don't have money to check, write checks, $100 mm -hmm. or whatever, sponsor. But, hey, are you guys doing auction online auction? I can give you a gift basket with Nepalese stuff like we used to give scarf and some wine and gift cards, spices, you know, things along that line. So um, I think being able to be part of big organization and small organization that impacted the community in a beautiful way uh, for people who might not even ever try it or step into that place and raising funds for the reasons that they are doing this fundraising was huge for us. Absolutely. That is so huge. And I love what you said right at the beginning too, when you're talking about you actually at one point went into somebody's homes and cooked for them for really young entrepreneurs they might have that opportunity. They might not even have a gift certificate to give yet, but that is just an incredible way to share your gifts with others and give gifts mm -hmm. through that. So thank you for all of those donations and the, the support you've given the community. What is one challenge that you have faced? I know you had a really unique challenge a few years ago. <laughs> um, do you, would you briefly just talk about that challenge and then any other challenges you want to talk about? Um, I think uh, that was uh, one of the biggest challenge uh, that we had, uh, the chill burning down. And a lot of people don't know about it, but that the Sunday it happened, and then that Friday we were going to open Daily Taco. So I had, a, I had team members, employees that I had hired to specifically open Daily Taco. So 
not just I was watching my all of my uh, identity, right? My professional identity what was my baby burning up in smoke, also knowing mm-hmm. that I need to make calls to these people and tell them they don't have jobs where they might have less jobs to do it. So that mm-hmm. was like, you know, a double whammy, but I'm so glad uh, my former general manager, Drew um, Kastner, he was, I was like, Drew, I can't handle it. Can you call them and tell them like they don't have a job? Because I had to take care of my chill staff first, you know, because yes. they were with them first, but it was not uh, easy, but those are on the big, not everybody has to go through some big challenges like that. And I don't hope it on anybody, um, but you know, challenges being in the service industry and being here as lack of transportation, which really leads to um, staffing issues. That is really, really tough. Um, because, you know, service industry, not everybody might have a car and uh, people here, they are, you know, they might want to work it when they are in school or when they're in college, but for part time. So, but when you are producing a good quality from scratch and it's just a training time, onboarding time and cost is so high. So mm-hmm. trying to get those people here, it has, has been really tough. Um, I think that those are the two biggest challenges and, you know, um, without my purveyors, um, it is hard who provide all of the best ingredients possible, but it's still being in Wisconsin and having not, you know, I wish I could just walk to the market every day and pick out my items, but, you know, like right now, there's nothing growing here. So, <laughs> so I think that's another thing as a chef, that is a challenge, you know, um, I envy, not in a bad way, but like, oh, I wish I was in like South Carolina, North Carolina, or California, where you always had access to this fresh ingredients fresh. and do yeah. all of those, right? So um, I think those are for my industry specific. Yeah, wide variety of challenges there. So what does the future look like to you and to Chiel? Um, I know I, I drive past it right now. We've got a building being built and Daily Taco is um, open. Uh, what does the future look like? Oh, future looks super busy. <laughs> uh, future looks challenging and exciting. Um, you know, it's like once you start of uh, creating all of these businesses and it's almost like, oh, this is so exciting. Like, what can I do next? Which is why Daily Taco. So it's like another Mexican place, but it's not really, um, it is, we specifically focus on the Western, like uh, Guadalajara and cuisine. So, you know, when you eat our tacos, it's not what you might get at a Tex-Mex place. It has its own place. And we just wanted to, I had a friend who uh, used to come to my house and she used to cook all these Food. And she was, she grew up in Guadalajara. She was born and raised, grew up in Guadalajara, but he, she was there for cultural exchange for a few years. So then she would make all these things that didn't taste anything like all of the restaurants that I have. I was like, how, like, what is this? Like, oh my goodness, like your tamales are different. Your, and it's like, oh, this is, you know, all my family, my abuela's mm-hmm. recipe and things like that. So I'm like, we have to get people to learn about this, right? Um, how do you make a chicken taco? It's not always about grilled or sauteed. It is like they braise it with the chipotle, with the onions, with the sofritos and things like that. So um, I got to learn all of that. So, you know, again, going back to having as a business or as an entrepreneur, knowing what your product and why would someone pick your product versus so ours is having those, um, those differentiation. However, I have to say, even though, on this side, I will, I have been so particular about um, like what kind of food we serve, but to adjust to people's expectation, I thought the chill was going to be tough, but uh, opening a Mexican restaurant, Guadalajara restaurant was even tougher because people mm-hmm. already had a, had a perception or understanding of what it should be, what it should sure. look like, how it should come. Um, Interesting. So so then now you're like breaking you're changing and change management is not easy I mean even within your company and trying to manage change uh, somebody's change when when it's your guest like what do you mean you don't have chicken breast taco what do you mean you don't have fajitas like Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean you don't have flour tortillas but she told me like we don't use flour tortillas Mm -hmm. unless you use burrito it's only corn and tacos like this is what it is but you do have to be agile as a business so then we added um, um, like Americano buttons, so which would be more of a Tex-Mex 
salsa, right? So they might not want the uh, salsa verde or salsa taquera. They just might want sour cream and lettuce, you know, and tomatoes on it. So we had to add those to be um, to make sure our income, our cash flow, and our uh, our guest count was staying because not everybody is ad adventurous. So as a business owner, you have to be agile. You have to be uh, adapting, but without compromising, I just I just didn't change. Oh, oh, nobody is really enjoying it. I'm just going to change to I know what works. That's where sometimes people make mistakes. They, you know, they have a really good brand, really good product, but once there's a challenge and people kind of push back, you know, believing in what you originally thought. But okay, so I hear you, but how can I keep my integrity of what my business and brand is? Yeah. And but still make sure I'm making money, right? Yeah. So then, so you have to adapt um, and be agile on those situations, but making sure you're true to your brand is very important. And that's worked out very well for you with the Chiel. So we're so excited for it to open. Um, we don't have an exact <laughs> opening date yet, do we, for the Chiel to reopen? But No, uh, we are hoping for fall, end of fall this year. Okay. Okay. Keeping mm -hmm. everything like a, every single finger or anything I can cross cross. Right. Totally. <laughs> and my final question for you, Barca, is all subjects open. What inspires you most? Ooh, I think it's people talking about our food and, and the love and the flavors that we put in our food. Uh, drinks as well for example at our last pop-up we had our lamb shank that was huge um popular and at the at the chill so we had that in the menu so then we took the lamb fat like when we're uh, we were cooking it and then utilized it to do a uh, lamb fat wash to create a manhattan right oh. so now if you think about those and then you ate that man you ate that uh, lamb and then you enjoyed a manhattan with it right so it all makes sense. It all comes together like in your mouth. And then it's just wow. so seeing and people thinking like the flavors are like so memorable. It's mind blowing. We're not, you know, you're not going to get, you can't go to some places. Like, okay. I'm going to go get the wild boar Rogan Josh there or duck Saipian here. You can't, we're the only place. And then when people do taste all those flavors that they have never, you know, just their expression and, thankfulness and that one is a huge and inspiring and then also my teammates you know um I I've been very lucky over 75 percent of my team members have been with me for, for over five years which is not normal in the industry um so I think having having the team members that also believe in your product and they get excited about it you know and then I give them autonomy to be like I don't need you to sell this to sell this. I want you to sell the things you believe in, right? So, and I can look at the ticket and I can say, this is Barb, this is Cindy's, this is Whitney, because they all have their own favorites, right? Sure. Uh, so, you know, seeing, and then how my team is learning and sometimes they yell at me as in like, now we can't enjoy anywhere else because the flavor is just not there. But just having the team and the families to see their family growing and how we have helped them mm -hmm. um, throughout the years. I think that is also very inspiring and to be able to give back to the community because if I just work nine to five job, our job, you know, I probably would make more money, not as much as I want, but I wouldn't be able to give back in this impactful way, the way I have and being able to give back. And that also inspires me to do better. And I think Jesse would feel the same. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time today. If I know there's a there's an upcoming event uh, where people might be able to see you. I think Jesse sent me something over. Can you share that event with us? Um, it is gonna, be, it's a Milwaukee Magazine Chef event. It's on April 19th. I do have a link. I think you have the link already. Yep. Um, so there's going to be everybody. Um, I, we have Dane who just won the uh, James Baird uh, to Adam from Lupi and Iris, you know, Sanford, Justin, 
so all these amazing chefs that you can you know it's uh, this kind of event is unheard of i know they put it every year so they will be able to come um and enjoy all of these the best of chefs in milwaukee and i know we're missing few of them here too but just humble to be in this but uh you could go uh, online um and just do a chef event and you will find um you can google it and you'll find the link um so register for it because i know they only have specific amount of seats and i know they're almost so loud now so okay and then if people want to go to daily taco they can go on social media or your website is that correct yeah they can go just to daily taco i mean believe it or not there's another daily taco in Carol. Um, I think North Carolina and sometimes we'll get a call and be like you are not open <laughs> okay and they're like we are open we are open. but if you do daily taco you're gonna find you can order online you can um, do multiple different things you can call in to order you can come in and dine with us um, we have happy hour music on Saturdays and happy hour amazing um, a therapy a group therapy where you get a picture of margarita and have a therapy Oh, so things, things like that. So watch out for all of that that we have. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Barka. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.